Okay, YouTubers, this is the Ingrid Prepper. So today's episode, we're going to entertain the question, is the supply chain broken? And are we kidding ourselves? So now I ask this because look what's going on, right? You have the colonial pipeline shut down. That's going to hinder gasoline being delivered to delivery trucks that deliver us our food and our goods. You had the Suez Canal incident where a cargo ship blocked that. And then you had the ice storm or the winter freeze that snapped uh, the Southwest. You had these three things going on, guys. And then you had the mother of all fake pandemics or whatever you want to call it, hinder uh, America last year. And that shut down a lot of our uh, plants here in the United States, right? So the chicken plants, turkey, uh, sorry, pork, beef, these plants were shut down. These meat processing places were shut down because of lack of workers and COVID, right? Lack of workers processing the meat, lack of truck drivers delivering those meats to the supermarkets, lack of supermarket workers putting them, uh, meats and stuff on the shelves, right? So we had all of that happen last year. And then here this year, 2021, we had these new set of problems setting back our supply chain even more. Now, few problems we're seeing, a few shortages we're, we're seeing and we're going to see is coming to fruition, guys. I mean, like, again, last year, a lot of us were saying there was a food crisis coming, food crisis coming. I pulled back and said, you know what? We're going to have food problems before we have crisis. We're not going to jump right into crisis mode. Uh, we are absolutely going to see food problems before we see crisis, a food crisis, if you will. But nonetheless, these are the shortages of things we're going to see. We're going to see a shortage of microchips, chicken, metals, chlorine, steel, lumber. Now, a lot of the stuff doesn't really doesn't equate to us, right? Like microchips. All right, if you want a new car, you're going to wait longer. If you want some new tech, you're going to wait longer because there's no microchips available, right? So uh, that shortage right now really doesn't affect us, especially if you're a homesteader, if you're living off the grid. I mean, yes, if you have uh, solar panels and, and you were looking to get them installed, that might delay your getting them installed. Actually, what's going to delay your solar panels from getting installed is the uh, metals. And I'm going to get into that in a little bit. But right now, for example, there's going to be a chicken shortage. The chicken shortage actually is because they pulled back on the amount of chickens that they were, I guess, hatching, right? Or, or yeah, hatching. And because of COVID, they don't have enough workers. They don't have enough workers to process those chickens. So there's less chickens available on the market. So then you also have companies like uh, KFC and, and uh, Buffalo Wings or that wing company, right? You have those companies acquiring a lot more chicken because now things are opening up again. Well, there's less chicken out there for them to buy. And that makes it, that in turn makes it, less for us to buy, even though there is a consumer side and there's an industrial or business side, right? So chickens that go to companies like KFC, Popeyes, things like that, they actually have their own uh, arena to pick their chickens from, whereas we have our own uh, customer side. Uh, I forgot there's a, another term for it. But anyway, we're going to start seeing a shortage in chicken. Now, chicken doesn't it does affect us because I see where this is going with the chicken. I see how they don't want us to have meats. So we're going to start seeing more shortages in meats, undoubtedly. Uh, but with the chicken right now, I'm still seeing it on the shelves here in the city. But other places are seeing less chicken. Not that they're not seeing any, they're just seeing less chicken. So we're definitely going to see a chicken shortage soon. So with that, guys, if you have chicken in, in your area, uh, buy them now. Get yourself a vacuum sealer. I said this before. Get yourself a vacuum sealer. Vacuum seal your chicken. Put them in a deep freezer. Uh, right now, I'm entertaining getting a deep freezer. So I have to clear a corner over here in the living room to put a deep freezer in. I don't want to do that, but unfortunately, our hand is going to be forced because we need to pack food away. We need to pack meat away because we're going to see meat shortage, especially this summer, which is probably pretty much the worst time to have a fucking meat shortage. So everyone likes barbecuing, and this is not the time to have a meat shortage, but nonetheless, that's where we're headed. Chlorine is another shortage that we are seeing. So chlorine, this is an interesting one because, again, um, there's less chlorine available on the market. And I think this is to consumers. I don't think this applies to hotels and resorts. But for, con 
for consumers, those of us who have backyard pools, above ground, in ground, whatever pool you have, I don't have one obviously, right? But uh, whatever you have, you should be looking to buy these uh, pool tablets before the prices get even higher. As of right now, I couldn't find out why there was a chlorine shortage, but nonetheless, I think it has to do with the processing plants not having enough workers to process the chlorine tablets. The whole worker thing is a real issue now. We have a shortage of workers. We had a shortage of workers before COVID, actually. I remember being in Vermont, and Vermont, before the whole COVID case incident, sorry, they were having an issue looking for people to go up there and work. Then COVID hit, and I went last year, they really had a problem looking for workers. But now people don't want to work because they don't, don't want to, A, get COVID. The government is supplementing them, which is a bad idea. You went from giving people welfare to now giving people just money to stay home. And what do you think they're going to do? They're going to choose laziness and free money over working. This is how you destroy an economy. This is how you destroy a country. You do exactly what Biden's doing. So the chlorine, the chlorine supply, I, actually, I'm sorry, the chlorine supply is low because of a fire that happened because of Hurricane Harvey. Just popped in my head. And uh, the fire affected the main, I guess, that was isn't, isn't the only factory, but one of the chlorine factories down in Louisiana. They had a fire and it destroyed their refinery, so now they have to rely on the other plants who have worker shortages, right? So that's what it was. So that main plant went down, the refinery, sorry, chlorine refinery went down, and now it's, you know, obviously they're outsourcing to other companies here in the United States, but they can't keep up the speed like this one did. And now they have the worker shortage as well. That's why you have your chlorine shortage. Now gas. Gas has a double whammy, right? Gas has the colonial pipeline being shut down, and they also have lack of drivers, delivery drivers, driving gasoline from refineries to gas stations. You had that. You had that going last year because of COVID. You had guys not want to get sick, not want to be on the road, right? You have gas prices going up also because these truck drivers are asking for more money. That's going to spike the prices in gas on our end. But then the Colonial Pipeline, which is still shut down, is also going to drive the, the, the gas price up and create gas shortage, at least here in the East Coast. I think other places of the United States, they'll probably fare well. They'll, well, they'll do okay. But we will definitely feel it here in the East Coast, especially here in cities like New York, where we have an absorbent amount of fucking people and an absorbent amount of fucking cars for no reason. Now, I get it if you have a job that requires you to have a car, like myself, but there are a lot of people here who do not move their fucking cars only on the weekends. And even then, they don't move it. Used to know an old man who kept his car parked here on the street every day. He moved it from one side of the street to the next. That's all he did. He never moved his car. He would sit in his car, hang out, but he would never move his car. Just back and forth, rather. Sorry. Why have a car? Nonetheless, you know, that was his thing. And there's a lot of guys that do that shit. They just have a car to have it and they don't go anywhere. Why have a car in the city? Anyway, that's another argument for another day. But with that, guys, that's the gas problems we're going to see here in New York City. We're going to see in big cities like New York. Sorry. We're just going to see a gas shortage and gas restrictions. Gas restrictions are not fun, right? What gas restrictions are is certain gas stations, for example, are designated to... Uh, just emergency vehicles. Then other gas stations are, are um, designated for emergency workers. They did that during, I think it was Irene, right? So, or Sandy, sorry, Hurricane Sandy. And so with that, that's not fun. Regular people can't go to that gas station. But regular people go to another gas station where the fucking line is like two, three miles long. Now you're sitting idle, burning your fucking gas, waiting for, waiting for gas. So as of right now, 20 to 25% of the trucking fleet that delivers gasoline is not moving. And again, because they don't have enough qualified drivers. Apparently, you need qualifications to drive gasoline, and it makes sense, if I'm not mistaken. You need to take a uh, few hazmat courses to drive gasoline, I think. And it's not like crazy getting a suit hazmat course. You just have to know like what to do if your truck, you know, fucking explodes and you don't die and how to shut off this and if I'm not mistaken if there's some kind of a course and that you have to take that before you drive uh, a gasoline tanker if I'm wrong please let me know in the description section below now the national gas 
price is going to jump up 2% Monday, right? Which is today, but you guys probably won't see this video till Tuesday or Wednesday. But guys, uh, we're going to see an increase in gas. That's just what it is. Gas shortage, gas price increase, right? So that's what it is. We'll probably be paying by the end of the summer five bucks. I think if this colonial pipeline thing continues to go on, we're probably going to see six, seven, maybe eight bucks here in the cities. I could be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. Lumber. Lumber is something that we are seeing the prices go up in. The reason why we're seeing a lumber shortage is because lumber mills closed down during COVID thinking that the housing market was going to take a hit, that there were going to be less people looking for homes and wanting to build homes. Well, that didn't happen. Instead, that got hot. The housing market skyrocketed. People were looking for homes. They were looking to get out of the city. And the lumber company was like, shit, we shut everything down. So now we have to play catch up. So the lumber company, though there's a lumber shortage and the prices of lumber is high, that price is going to come down because the lumber companies are going to be able to catch up. Some of the places I'm going to assume are probably going to have to run a little longer hours than they normally would to play catch up. But nonetheless, that's not too bad other than as of right now, if you were looking to build a home, you were looking to build a homestead, that might not happen because the price of lumber is absorbently high. Now metals. Metals, when I talked earlier about batteries or solar panels and things like that. Uh, these are the metals that are going to slow you down from getting uh, batteries for, let's say, your car, batteries for your solar generator, right? Your solar panels, uh, copper, lithium, graphite, nickel, cobalt, and mag I think magnesium or magnanese. I'm probably saying it wrong. These metals are used for batteries and in other technology as well, like cars and computers microchips right so again guys these because for example i think a lot of microchip companies are building like faster uh you know microchips and they need these kind of metals solar cars are going to see a problem solar generators you're going to see a problem solar panels you're going to see a delay in delivery not that you're not going to see them at all but you're definitely going to see a delay now the jackery which i'm doing a video on later this week they have a generator that I wanted. It was the 2000, right? It was the Jackery 2000. I have the Jackery 1500. I was looking to order the Jackery 2000, and they have a delay on the product because of metal shortages. So these are things that are that can catch up. The bigger problem, guys, again, anything that involves food, food delivery, and gas. Those are the things that are going to affect us more than metals. But nonetheless, if you're looking to get something like a solar generator, order it now and wait. Steel is another uh, supply chain that's, I wouldn't say broken, but it definitely took a hit and it took a hit because of COVID. It took a hit because they did the same thing as lumber. They did the same exact shit as lumber. They, they shut down thinking that the housing market wasn't going to go anywhere, that construction wasn't going to go anywhere because of COVID, and that didn't happen, right? What, what wind up happening is the opposite. More buildings went up. Right, more construction and now the, the iron mills who take forever to if i'm not mistaken get back up to gear or they take a while to get back up to gear they were like "Shit, what and then they they jump back into it they're going to catch up as well they're probably going to run longer hours as well to meet more demands because they had higher demand in steel than they thought they they were going to get so they thought i think by the end of last year into the beginning of this year they were going to get less of uh, demand and instead the demand went up but they didn't have it because they, they shut down operations and or slowed down operations. So now they got caught with their pants down. So now, with these supply chains being broken or, or delayed, if you will. Now, broken doesn't mean it can't get fixed, guys. Obviously, supply chains can get fixed. But we are entering uh, an, an area with at least 3D supplies that are going to wind up fucking us in the long run. And gas is the more bigger one because gas lends to everything. Lends to food delivery, lends to putting gas in your car to get to work, to get your kids dropped off for childcare, to get a kid to school. Gas is the bigger issue. Gas also in delivery trucks that deliver food to us, that deliver products we need, that deliver medical supplies we need. The military fucking protecting us. Gas is also needed for their vehicles as well. So it's diesel. So these are the issues that we're going to start seeing. And if we don't, if they don't figure out this fucking coastal uh, colonial, sorry, pipeline problem, we're definitely going to see some serious shit coming this summer. Other than that, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. You can like and subscribe to this channel. You can also follow me on the Angry Truths channel. Like and subscribe to that. 
Other than that, guys, thank you for watching.